euh, merci d'être euh, venu assister à cette dernière conférence de cette première journée du village des sciences pour le grand public. Il y aura un cycle de conférences également demain dimanche. Et pour terminer, donc, nous accueillons Annette Lee. Alors c'est une conférence qui sera en anglais. Euh, donc il y aura un temps d'échange à la fin et on pourra éventuellement traduire euh, les propos d'Annette ou vos questions pour qu'il puisse y avoir un échange. Je vais juste laisser... En amont, la parole à Géraldine Leroux, donc, qui est professeure des universités à l'Université de Bretagne Occidentale et qui est co-directrice du département d'ethnologie. Donc voilà, je vous souhaite une bonne conférence et puis on pourra échanger avec Annette à la fin. Merci beaucoup Marie. Euh, oui, en effet, c'est juste en, en qualité d'investigatrice principale et de directrice du programme de recherche OSPAPIC que j'ai le plaisir, à la demande d'Annette, de vous la présenter. Euh, Annette Lee est une euh, personne qui a enseigné pendant plus de 20 ans l'astrophysique aux états unis euh, dans une université, mais c'est quelqu'un qui a aussi été toujours formé doublement à la fois à la pratique artistique et aux mathématiques et à l'astrophysique. Et elle est d'origine autochtone, Lakota. Et donc elle va vous présenter justement une astronomie autochtone et la façon dont des artistes mobilisent ces savoirs autochtones. Et dans le cadre d'Ospapix, c'est exactement ce que nous faisons, puisque ce sont des regards croisés entre des artistes et des scientifiques qui invite à penser autrement la question de la pollution marine et la pollution spatiale. OSPAPIC, c'est pour Ocean and Space Pollution, Artistic Practices and Indigenous Knowledges. Et j'ai le plaisir donc de convier Annette Lee à vous présenter son travail. Merci beaucoup d'être là avec nous. Hello everyone, Nataku Yasin. My name is Annette, Annette Lee. I am an um, artist and an astronomer. I'm really thankful to be here. Uh, with a good heart, I would like to present uh, a very recent piece that I created. Um, it is based on sound. So a little bit about me is that I, like I said, I'm a scientist and an artist. And I come here as a whole person. And by that I mean Mind, body, heart, spirit. And the spirit leads because the spirit part, the non-physical, is the part that was existing before this time, our short time on earth, however long we get. And it's the part that will go on after we're done here, right? We only have so much time. And so I'm not really talking about religion. What I'm talking about is what makes us human, that we have a soul, we have a spark in our eye. And it's just important to take care of that part. Just like we wouldn't try to say we don't have a body. <laughs> How crazy would that be? It's absurd. And we have to take care of our body because it's all we have. It's our responsibility, our role. It would be foolish, right? So we have our minds, we take care of our minds, we love to learn, we go to university, we study. We as human beings, two-legged, we have the gift of wisdom, right? Of all the nations, of all the species, of all the life. That's what we have, that's our specialty. Um, even the word homo sapiens, wise man, of all the other humans. But the thing is, is that um, I feel that I'm here because we've kind of gotten off track. And I know that you probably care too about um, what's happening in the world. There's so many crises. It's getting, it's getting a little bit overwhelming, wouldn't you say? <laughs> um, we've got climate crisis. Just last week, I was in Arizona, and it's so hot. It was 102. I don't know what that translates to, but it's getting so hot that people can't live there anymore. And it's so hot that the cactus, the big ones, the cactus people, they look like people, they're standing, where mountains of them had died, like graveyards because they couldn't take the heat. So I think however you want to look at it, there's a lot going on 
for the humans right now. But I think this is a critical time where we can use art and use science to start to peel back the layers because we don't want to just throw out our strong minds, the gift of wisdom. We love science. I don't know about you, but I love science, right? I love mathematics and astronomy. But the problem is, is we can't just do that anymore. And so we have to use the best of, of our whole being, mind, body, heart, and spirit. And that is why I'm here because um, I really believe in the younger generation. And like, I'm not gonna be here forever. So I wanna use whatever life force, whatever talents that I have been given and I have responsibility to try to work with young people especially to shift things so that we don't just keep doing the same old, same old. <laughs> it's just like not working. So that's why I'm here. And, um, and that's why I'm doing this art. So I just want to say that I live in um, Minnesota, which is Minnesota Makoche. And I live near the sacred site called Bedote, which is where the rivers meet or the womb. So I want to put down thanks for my home. This is the original territory of Ojibwe and Dakota people. And these are my communities. So I identify as mixed race um, indigenous. My tribe is Lakota, but I'm also Irish and Chinese. And my husband was Ojibwe. So my kids are also mixed race native. So I want to put down thanks to the people here for Geraldine for bringing me here and Ospapik and this incredible team that I'm now part of. I wanna put down thanks for each and every one of you for showing up here and sharing this little bit of time together. I wanna to put down thanks to the land, the sky and earth and the water, the water here, which I can tell there is so much love for the water in this community. So um, I really respect that. Um, so, with that, I wanna um, show you some um, of my work, but I wanna say that this work is based on sound. And you might say, well, what's so good about sound? <laughs> well, one of the things about sound, if you think about it, is that it's older than our sense of vision, right? You think of humans and how we evolved in the history of life, Water came, water had the life on earth first, right? So for billions of years, the life was in the water and only in the water. And only just recently, it came 400 million years ago, recently, <laughs> came out of the water and into the land and into the air with the frogs, turtles, insects, and then the birds. Now we're a part of that long history. So when we think of putting down things for water, we're putting down thanks for our life and for that whole story of life that science has given us that story in large part. But the thing about sound is, as both an individual, think about when we were all born, we were in our mother's womb, right? <laughs> and when we were in our mother's womb, we could hear before we could see. Sound is much older to us than sight. And as a species, as a collective species, humans, right? We are terrestrial beings, but before our whole life um, genealogy of life on earth, the life came from the water and underwater, sight isn't that good for survival. The light dies out too quickly, like 30 meters down, right? It's the sound that's primary. It's the sound that is going to help you survive or not. So sound is much older than the vision. And so that's why we're using it because the way our brains work is the sound goes into the front part of the brain and goes right through like where the place where emotions are processed. 
it doesn't it isn't processed in this long way that vision and in in images are processed so anyways let's get to the good stuff the first thing i want to show you is some sound so if everyone could uh, if everyone could listen maybe we can even dim the lights and this work is built around whale song and I have the honor and privilege of working with an incredible scientist. Her name is Anne Simonis. She's an underwater acoustic ecologist. And she has been studying and collecting whale song her whole career. Amazing person and scientist. So these are her uh, raw data. They go on ships, on science vessels, and collect these whale song. Let's listen to the first one. It's 30 seconds. You ready? Yeah. You recognize the sound? Is that beautiful? Okay, listen to this next one. And what you're going to hear is the humpback and then something else. And I want you to think about what that other second one is. The humpback at first, and the second sound. second sound. Does it sound like some machine noise, some, some gadget, some gear, some kind of clicking? Can you believe that's a sperm whale? That clicking sound is a sperm whale. What are the two different whales saying to each other? Right? They're together there in the water and she's recording it with a hydrophone. So this is incredible. These are, the, these are sperm whales that have been in the news because they're using AI, artificial intelligence, to try to decode the language. Okay, this, this last one is the dolphins. And you'll hear at the very end what sounds like a heartbeat. But that's yet another whale. Okay, let's play it. <clears throat> Did you hear that heartbeat? Boom, boom. Guess what that was? That was the song of the blue whale, the largest animal that has ever lived on our planet. Yes, bigger than the dinosaurs, than any dinosaur. That heartbeat was that whale's one of their many sounds. But how amazing is that, right? They have sounds that are lower than we can hear lower frequencies. Okay, so let's keep going. The reason I uh, have a lot of whales and wanted to show you that is because um, the whales, as you'll see in this tapestry of sound that I've created to put down thanks for the water um, and the life that we're a part of that story, uh, the whales are uh, repeated. Um, they're sort of the doorkeepers of this tapestry. So 
This piece is a part of an exhibit called um, Blended Worlds, Experiments in Interplanetary Imagination. <laughs> and my piece is called Ancient Echoes, Soundscapes Across Worlds. Okay, so I'm using sound as a primary in the hierarchy, sound, to try to get to some place maybe unconscious almost, somewhere deeper and not just in our mind all the time. But there is our mind there too, but it's just not up front. But what, what are the worlds? So the worlds is making a connection between our water world, the blue marble, planet Earth, right? We're 70, 75% of the surface is covered with water. Life as we know it needs water to survive. Came from the water. We are made mostly of water, right? Our brains are like 80% water. Our bones are like 20% water, right? We're mostly water. Um, and guess what? We know that there's a moon of Jupiter it's the second big one, one of the Galilean moons, Europa, and it has an ocean. Not only an ocean, but the ocean is something like 60 miles deep, where the Earth ocean is on average only two miles. At the deepest, something like seven miles. But either way you look at it, this ocean on this moon of Jupiter is very special. And moons aren't supposed to have oceans. It's an ocean world, not a planet, though. It's orbiting around its parent planet, Jupiter, right? And we have Hubble Space Telescope um, and other evidence that shows that it's actually water. There's plumes that came out in, I think, 2012. And so with NASA JPL, this uh, exhibit that I'm going to show you highlights of the, the real was um, put together by an incredible person at JPL, NASA JPL, named David Delgado. And he was the curator for this uh, exhibit. And he knows all the awesome scientists at NASA JPL. And he introduced me to them. And I started to work with a bunch of them that are on the Europa Clipper mission as lead scientists. And um, they were going to launch that Europa Clipper just two days ago, but there's a lot of hurricanes in Florida, so it had to be postponed. Hurricane Milton. <laughs> so um, it's not going to go, it's still going to go, but just at the next launch window. But here you can see basically is what you're looking at is an ice shell. Oops. <laughs> See the pointer? Yeah. The ice shell, the plumes, the liquid water. Here's like a mix of ice and uh, liquid water. Here's the water, just like our ocean. And as you might know, we used to think that at the bottom of the ocean, it would be too extreme. No light, no energy source, no sunlight. In our Earth's ocean, it was considered impossible for life to exist there. When in fact, what happened is that we discovered that not only that life exists at these hydrothermal vents, but it thrives. So there's whole ecosystems of life there in these extreme environments. And where is the energy even coming from in that darkness? The core of the Earth. The core of the earth, there's a crack and it's leaking up the heat and all the chemicals that's needed and the heat for life to thrive. And not only that, we think that maybe even life likely started on our planet in these conditions in a hydrothermal vent at the bottom of the ocean. So how cool is that? And now we have this moon where we know there's an ice shell, we know there's liquid water, we know there's these likely hydrothermal vents, and so we're sending missions. If the ESA sent a mission, everyone wants to see what is down here. But we know where there's water on Earth, there is life. And even in the most crazy extreme conditions, there's life. It might be you know, cellular, multicellular, but what is down there? 
We don't know. So here's the thing. This art project is about putting down thanks. It's about the process of acknowledging my place as a human being and putting down thanks for water. It's pretty simple, really. Because without water, I wouldn't be standing here. And But it's without that whole history of the water on our planet and all the animals and plants that came before, I wouldn't be standing here. So what I'm doing here, David asked me to make an experiment. And guess what? The experiment is this. Can we use sound to create more empathy in the face of the unknown, right? We don't know what's down here. And I don't know about you, but that kind of makes me feel afraid. <laughs> the unknown is kind of scary, right? But how about if we try to challenge ourselves to not go right to fear, but go to some other place? Well, what else is there? But if, there could be empathy. There could be kinship, right? They could be like, hey, we're water in this solar system, water-based beings in life. And whatever is down there in that water, we have that kinship with. Because we, we need water. Whatever life is there, it needs water too. So let's put down that acknowledgement. Okay, so moving right along, um, these are what you're going to see in just one second. And I put these as quick uh, examples because the sound is beautiful, but it's even more beautiful and interesting if you know what you're actually hearing, okay? So we're seeing the visualization of the sound. So the white dots are moving to the sound through an oscilloscope, a digital oscilloscope. Uh, the, um, the other visuals are also moving a lot of times to the sound. And these are all a part of the tapestry that you're about to see. So just quickly, I'll play these so you can have an idea. This first one is the sound of ice singing. <laughs> so these are raw data recorded by colleagues and uh, scientists. Um, um, this one was recorded by a frozen lake in Minnesota uh, by Nathan. So let me get, try to get it to play. Listen to this. Oh, that's not it. Sorry, folks. <laughs> that's the sound of space. Hold on. There it is. This is ice singing. Okay, um, this next one is the sound of water. So in this tapestry, you're going to hear a sound of... Oh. This is kids singing a water thank you song. Thank you, water. Thank you, water. Okay, this blue one, if it plays. This is from Voyager. This is the sound of interstellar space. And then a flyby through another one of Jupiter's moons, Ganymede, at the end. That's this one. This next one is crickets. as part of the acknowledgement when uh, life came out of the water and went onto the land, into the air. The insects become very important to the story of life. And the last one is really special because Corey Cochran, who is on the science team at the Europa Clipper mission, he's in charge of all the magnetometers. And you know, Jupiter has a lot, a huge magnetic field. So this is a, he's got a lot of responsibility, but he, what happens is, is that Europa, this moon of Jupiter, has induced magnetic fields as it flies through the magnetic field of Jupiter, and it's causing electric currents on the moon, 
and a magnetic field on the moon. This is really important to protect. That magnetic field is the protective blanket for life, right? Or otherwise, everything would be stripped away, like Mars. No magnetic field, it's going to be gone soon. Solar wind, cosmic particles, whatever. It's, it needs the magnetic field for protection. So listen to this, and then we'll get to the main animation. This is the sound of the induced magnetic field on this moon. Okay, so we're gonna get to the last. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you before we play the video is that um, it's built in a tapestry of seven directions, north, uh, east, south, west, above, below, and center. So this is a common practice when we wanna um, do something important acknowledgement of the four directions above, below, center. And the thing here is that um, these are, the whales are the opening and the closing and the traveling song. So these are all acknowledgements to earth. And this one starts with the sounds of space. So going back to the sound of the big bang, the cosmic microwave background radiation, 13.8 billion years ago. Then the sound of water and life on Earth, which would be water 4.5, 4 4.4 billion years ago. Then about 400 million years ago when life came out of the water onto the land, the sound of frogs and insects and finally birds. And then this is all turning north, east, uh, south, and then west. Finally, the sound of humans two and a half million years ago, depending on how you want to look at it, or Homo sapiens, 200,000 years ago. And then from there, we travel through the whale song to Europa. We put down acknowledgement to the magnetic field on Europa, to the ice shell. This is imagined sounds based on Earth ice singing, but you know, ice on Earth, ice on Europa, probably in the same ballpark then the water under the ice shell on Europa, and then the closing song um, by the whales. That's what you're about to hear. And last but not least, the credits, and this is a team effort. And like I said, we had a lot of uh, people working on this, especially the amazing team uh, with David Delgado at NASA JPL. And most of these, I'd say 98% of these um, audio clips are either I recorded or um, are my team, scientists like Ann Simonis or NASA JPL folks um, were a part of this. So let's hear the main audio visualization, ancient echoes, soundscapes, across worlds. <laughs> this is eight minutes of the highlights. Enjoy.
Merci beaucoup Annette. Thank you very much. C'était, je pense, une, une expérience euh, de vivre cette, euh, cette conférence vraiment qui mêle euh, art et science. It was really uh, an experience for uh, the audience here to uh, enjoy all the sounds here with the images. Et euh, c'était vraiment une conférence voilà sur les arts, la science et qui, euh, qui montre que la science nourrit l'art. So uh, science feeds arts. But arts are also going to feed science. Donc l'art va aussi nourrir la science et créer des ponts vraiment très importants entre deux mondes qui sont extrêmement différents mais qui ont pourtant beaucoup de choses en commun. 
Alors, ce qu'on va pouvoir faire, c'est peut-être un temps d'échange. Si vous avez des questions, je vais passer parmi vous. Je pourrais traduire vos questions donc, à Annette. Et donc, si euh, Annette euh, apporte des réponses, eh bien, on pourra les traduire avec, évidemment, Géraldine, qui connaît aussi très bien le travail d'Annette. You can speak in the oh, mic, please. At the actual exhibit, I forgot to say that this is actually on the floor. So the projection is not on a screen. It's on the floor. And I built a ring of sage, the plant medicine. And I marked the four directions on the ring. And I put the star metal in the north, the meteorite, in the north to mark it special of that place. So it's on the ring and it makes uh, like a portal on the floor, like a well. So just forgot to tell you that. Je vais descendre si parmi vous certains ont des questions. N'hésitez pas. Ah, je vois que de suite devant. Et ensuite, je viendrai derrière. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful, magical, and, uh, and a real experiment. Your colors are, are so uh, wonderful and sublime. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if on your internet site uh, you, you give the, um, the knowledge of the frequencies that yeah, are yeah. on, because we can't see it. Uh, yes, anetly.com. And I just got a little behind on the updating the website, but it will be there. I promise. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the visuals and some highlights, and a version of what you saw here, but it will be on the website. Yes, thank you. Thanks for asking. Hello, so thank you, Annette, for this conference. And I was wondering if, like we've seen that, the ice singing, the water moving, everything of the sound, so do we know if there is a place where there is like no sounds at all, like a natural place who doesn't have any sounds on the world. Or... Place of silence? Yeah. Does that exist? <laughs> I think, I think that um, we were just talking about this and someone tried to create a perfectly silent room and felt they failed. I think it's a very philosophical question. They heard, they heard in the silent room that they built the sound of their own body, their heartbeat, uh, their blood, um, you know, their stomach. They heard all, the, all their own sounds, which how can you stop and turn off your own, right? So I think this idea of can we find pure silence, 100% silence, I don't think we found it yet, and I'm not sure it exists. But I do think there's a lot of importance and brilliance in deep listening. Because what happens when we have to listen, um, we have to slow down and be in the present moment to really listen. And something magical, special happens. It sounds so ridiculously simple. <laughs> Just slow down, right? But um, there's a lot of depth in, in just that deep listening. So, yeah. Y a-t-il d'autres questions dans la salle? On this side of the room? <laughs> non? Oui, bien sûr, allez-y. Uh, excuse me again. Uh, I was wondering, um, do you capture the sound because of they create a resonance and a vibration special on the material and they reflect and then you capture the, the sound by this way or how do you capture the sound? <laughs> capture the sound any way possible. <laughs> um, a recording. Like when I'm recording, like one of the sounds was my own heartbeat. So that's a digital stethoscope and just holding it up to your heart and then putting on a huge speaker and recording it. And it just sounds, sounds, it's so simple. But like we think, like, I don't know, we just like lost track of the basics somehow. But you hear the sound of your own heartbeat. It's so powerful. It's strong, right? Um, other ones I recorded with students. So I have a, um, do a lot of work with students and getting them into the fun and the action. And so we went to a bay in Hawaii where there were turtles 
and we were doing underwater recording. And so you might have heard like in the water, it was like a crunching sound of like sand moving in the waves, like a rhythm. And that was recorded by students in Hawaii at the Kula Amakihi program and volcano. Um, and, and so uh, another one was uh, um, the sound of the hydrothermal vent, the water coming out of that. And I was gonna ask Kevin, who's on the team in astrobiology, but he was really, really busy with a new discovery from Mars. <laughs> and so I found that one on like the internet. Um, someone had posted their research results of a sound clip of the um, hydrothermal vent. Um, a lot of the ones though are people I know, like Stan, he is a professional like wildlife photographer and sound, and he has all the high tech. And um, he was really happy to collaborate and um, let me use some of his sound. So I'm kind of more low tech, and but learning, and then learning from the professionals. And then I'm working with them a lot of the scientists, biologists, acoustic biologists. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Et y a-t-il encore une question ou une remarque ou une intervention Alors vous retrouverez cette conférence en ligne euh, sur la chaîne YouTube de Cénopolis et on essaiera d'ici là d'inclure une traduction. We might add subtitles <laughs> to the conference, ah, to the show. Okay? Subtitles, yeah. Yes. Um, donc merci à tous d'avoir suivi cette dernière conférence. Pour ceux qui souhaitent, eh bien, il y aura un cycle de conférences également demain qui commencera à partir de midi avec différents intervenants sur des thématiques très très diverses. L'accès au village est bien évidemment gratuit de 10h jusqu'à 18h et donc vous avez encore un petit quart d'heure pour profiter des stands. Merci vraiment à tous pour votre participation. Thank you again, Annette. Merci Géraldine et bonne soirée à tous.